All right, welcome everyone. Chris Petrie here. It's a good morning, a good evening, a good afternoon. Wherever you are, I hope everything is well and we're on part three here. So congratulations, you made it to part three and hopefully you did not skip forward and skip parts one and two because that's where we're going to learn the the um, process to get to part three here. So um, part three, we're actually, we're going to finish up our painting and this part is really crucial because we're going to actually put together all the parts that we did in one and two uh, for the, for this part three. So in parts one and two, if you did skip and you couldn't uh, contain yourself and you had to skip to part three, um, this is what you'll have seen us uh, complete as we went through the process. So here we have our um, we have our tonal value sheet, which we were actually, um, just a quick, um, this tonal value sheet here is very important. So what we did is we just, um, we, we keyed in on the tonal values of the photograph that we were working from. And we just made sure that we definitely could see where the darkest darks are and the middle tones and the lighter tonal values. And we also made a small um, uh, value scale here. So basically in this painting that we're, we're doing, there was about five values that we could definitely see that were really pretty clearly evident. So we had the darkest dark, and then some of the medium uh, tone, tonal values, and then a little bit of white paper a little bit here and there. And then we also said, in relation to the tonal values here, we wanted to make sure we um, left a couple lights under the sails on the top edge of the uh, sailboats. So I made these notes for myself um, so that when I'm doing the painting and I'm in the, as we all know, when we're doing our watercolor paintings, time's of the essence, right? Uh, you know, once we start and we start doing washes, the paintings look much better if we just kind of work through them and keep going versus like stopping every two minutes and like, you know, we can definitely break down our paintings into three or four sittings or even more than that. It's all up to you. You're the artist. You decide how you want to paint your paintings, your watercolor paintings. But just a general rule is once we start painting, we'd like to have some some things worked out beforehand so we don't get stressed and worried about it when we're in the middle of our painting because we have to keep our attention on the paper and the water and the everything that's going on with our painting as we're doing that. So here we said we wanted to leave some definite light here on the top edge of the sailboats and we also wanted to leave some lights where the windows are on the uh, lighthouse and structure so there's like a, a lighthouse with like like a uh, building uh, next to it or uh, attached to it so we wanted to capture those little bits of light through those windows to give the painting a little more dimensionality three-dimensional feel so now that we have all our notes we tack these up across from us where we're working, or we set them down on the table where we're working, wherever, however you like to work. And you keep a couple of your notes nearby, you keep your photograph nearby, and then you, you know, continue to paint. So the first two parts, we did the sketch, the first part, and then the second part, we did our painting, our first um, couple washes. And again, this is the glazing approach, and basically, we always, uh, well, here on my channel, if you're used to coming by my channel, you'll notice that I always... Uh, usually mention whether we're doing a glazing technique or an a la prima technique. So basically glazing technique is you're doing maybe a few washes and letting things dry and then going over and building on top of your original glazes uh, darker tonal values for the most part. Whereas when you're doing a la prima you're going in and you're just going to paint the painting as you go and not really do a lot of glazing in it. You're just going to basically you can go in and start tackling your darks right away first that sets the key for your painting. So sometimes a la prime is a little bit easier painting if you're, um, if you want to get your tonal values correct. It's a little bit easier if you have a couple dark areas on your uh, painting first. So, and you can also do a glazing technique and put a couple darks in to start with too as well. It's just a little more challenging because if you run into uh, areas that you've already painted with your darks, it could bleed out into your uh, lighter areas. So. Usually people stick to either one or the other, either glazing technique or a la prima or a combination of the both, but 
for the most part here we're doing glazing technique. We did our first wash, then we did another wash to darken up our water here. And now we're going to go into our final washes, which are going to be the darks of the um, painting. And you'll see how the painting is really going to take on a real finished, beautiful look once we start putting in our darks now for the uh, final couple washes here. So I'll just, we'll always, for this uh, type of painting here, all paintings are different, of course. But for this painting, we wouldn't want to go in with um, murky, uh, muddy water. We want to start out with a nice, fresh, clean water. Uh, when we're starting in with this uh, last final wash here because we want to get the colors really um, uh, beautiful and vibrant and colorful and sometimes if you use a little bit of muddy water it can it can ruin some of the um, some of the look of the fresh paint not always but again with this here we'll use fresh water sometimes you can use um, water like this and that's fine uh, it depends on what um, what type of painting you're doing and so forth so you adjust all those things as you uh, create your art and figure out which times you'll need a little more fresh or clean water, sometimes you won't need that. And I have my miniature um, travel palette. Here I find that this is really good. I just got this. This is great for doing demos so that I don't uh, block the, the view here while I'm painting. Okay, so now I have a number six uh, round brush, Da Vinci, and I think I'm going to try to find a better point here. This one looks pretty good. Okay, we'll use this here. This is a number uh, eight. Number eight, Escada, Kalinsky Sable. And now I'm going to find my photograph. It's here in the studio somewhere across from me and let's see if I can find it. Okay, so I'm looking for my photograph now. And it's always good um, also, if you're doing like a painting like this, like a, like a water painting uh, seascape, you know, you can also uh, break out some reference material or look up some material online and print out some things like to get different ideas with colors maybe, um, color schemes that you might, might like to use or sometimes that's very helpful. So here I'm still looking for my photograph. It's here. And for some reason, if the photograph is, if you misplace your photograph, it's not a big deal. We'll just use, we'll use our, our reference. And so right now I have seemed to have misplaced my photograph, no big deal. So I'm just going to use this now. I'm going to use this for my guide as to where, how I'm going to do my tonal values on this, the rest of this painting. So we'll just use our notes and we'll go for it. So now I'm going to go for my darkest darks first. So that'll be French Ultramarine, Burnt Umber, a little bit of uh, Burnt Sienna, and that, that will be fine. And then I'll try to change it up as I go here. And I'm trying to keep this pretty much level. And those are the rocks of the jetty. And then we said we were going to leave a little white paper on the top there. And a little bit of cobalt, cobalt blue maybe. 
for that mid-tone of the sailboat. And then again I'm going to make sure I put in a little bit of raw sienna, it should change up a little more. And the same over here, we'll put in our Then we'll go in and do some darker darks for the, um, maybe over here this is a little more of a, I think there was a, a jetty maybe, a little bit uh, out there a little more. And then here, we're going to leave those couple windows. This was very dark in the pho photograph that we were working from, so I noticed maybe not as much, uh, I'm going to maybe try to introduce a little more warmer colors, so I'm going to go back in with some raw sienna here, and just try to charge some warmer color into this, the um, structure here where the lighthouse is. And we have that water in the uh, distance here. Actually, that is that is the um, hills, and we can keep this a little bit more. F let's let's since I don't have the photograph and I, I have an issue, I did misplace it somehow while we're doing this. That's never a problem. When you're an artist, you're creative, you come up with a d different creative ideas to any problem or issue. So here we're just going to, we're going to actually leave a little bit of water over the top of that um, jetty that goes all, all the way out from the shore, uh, from the shoreline all the way out to the lighthouse. Okay, and we're going to keep mixing our colors, so I added some more cobalt blue, some yellow ochre there, and then over here where there wasn't any water in between, but we could pretend there's a little bit of water in between there, since we are leaving some here. We'll pretend there's a little bit of water in between that jetty wall and that back distant shoreline there. And we're, we're going to do the same over here. We're going to have that distant shoreline, the bit of the darker shoreline here. So let's keep this pretty dark in tonal value. As we were saying before, the, these distant hills are two different tonal values, but it's really a, a a key to make sure we get the closer, like the, the the mountainous area, these are lower mountains, like shoreline basically, the hills of these distant shoreline, they're darker here, and then the one behind that is lighter. So let's we'll leave this one darker and we'll wait till this dries a little bit and then we'll we'll paint that other one in the back there. And once we paint that back mountain range in the distant uh, shoreline, it's really going to make the uh, three-dimensionality of the painting um, more exciting. So we'll keep going here. So now basically what we've done is we've gotten that shoreline in, the bottom of the boats, um, the uh, structure here um, that makes up the lighthouse. And we're really Coming along nicely here with this. This is looking fine. And we can make that a little darker, that section there. OK, 
Okay, this is looking fine. So we're going to let that, that dry a little bit. And with watercolor, of course, you can, when you're working with the darker tonal values with the really thick paint that we're using right now, as you can see, the very thick paint here, um, when you work like that, you can, you can add that in to your uh, washes and it's not going to really bleed or have a problem most times because it's so thick it doesn't really uh, give us a problem. I'm just going to get a little a brush with a little more of a better point on it. This one has a better point. It's a newer brush. These are the Charles Reed uh, travel brushes by Escoda. They're great. Fantastic points on them. And okay, so that is fine. Uh, now we can get into some subtle. Um, now I'm going to do a quick, we'll just we'll do a very fast, um, we'll just wipe our, um, our palette a little bit, get a clean working surface to get these tones for the roof. I'll use a little uh, burnt uh, uh, raw sienna. Um, burnt sienna, a little bit of uh, cerulean blue, and then we'll have a little bit of a nice tone for the roof here. Then I noticed the um, the lighthouse gets darker where the actual light is, the light of the lighthouse. So I'm going to go back in and get some uh, French ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna. And sometimes I'll I'll add a little dark um, to the to the edge where it, it meets up with the um, sky a little bit to give a little more. Um, a little more contrast and I'll go with a little bit of um, cerulean blue here and some raw sienna and that we can use for the sails as well maybe some of that raw sienna I notice it's a little a little bit uh, there's a shadow there on the sail I found my photograph actually
and I'll do the same over here. This is a little bit of cerulean and um, raw sienna. And you can let things dry if you need to. Sometimes if I uh, lose a, an edge where the sails are, I would just blot up a little bit with a tissue and smooth this out a little bit. And I would go with a little bit of uh, raw sienna. A little bit of raw sienna and cerulean blue just to, like we said here, we wanted to leave that light under on top of the, uh, the sailboat. And then, we'll, and then we can break that line up just a little bit so that you see a little bit of that light but not, not completely. And that looks pretty good. And I think we can do the... Maybe we can do the distant hills here. And I'm going to go with some cobalt blue, raw sienna, uh, raw sienna, cobalt blue. And I might, I might take a little bit of uh, raw sienna, just a couple spots here and there to maybe a little bit of viridian green. You can go more more color or less, like it's up to you. I'm trying to keep it more of uh, like the photograph. It's a little bit um, seems to be that time of day where it's a little more um, hazy, a little bit. So there's some bright sunlight, but there's some haze. It might be like uh, very humid out, so there's not a, a ton of uh, color, colorful. Um, Colors, and maybe we can go with. Um, let's see here. We'll do some more uh, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. Then I'll dry off the brush just a little bit. And a couple of the final details here. I get a little bit of those shadows underneath. I'll try to get that roof a little bit more.
in there. I, if you have a problem with uh, some, again, colors kind of going over different edges, you can just blot up a little bit of um, paint, and then you can always uh, let it dry completely, then go back and do a few touch-ups. So that's what we'll do. We'll come back and do a kind of uh, kind, a few um, touch-ups here, but for the most part, this is uh, good. It looks very uh, close to the to the photograph we did or to, that we were working from. The uh, sailboats could be a little bit, maybe the sails can be a little darker. Um, so that's something where sometimes in a painting you might you might leave things a little bit a little bit different. Maybe I mean you can try to get it exact if you want, but if it comes out really really close to the original plan that you had as far as your tonal values. I wouldn't go too much overworking it because then sometimes if we're overworking it again and again it, it gets a little more um, it shows on the painting so if we can kind of leave it more fresh a little bit underdone we're not going to go too much into details it's going to look good it's going to look better and then we'll be have a happier uh, pleasant uh, positive and pleasing finished look to our painting and I might just do um, another uh, quick um, there was a and I think I can I could do a little bit of and I think that's about it and we could add some, again, I don't want to overdo it, but I think I'm all right to just do a little bit of work with some cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of uh, burnt, burnt sienna, and maybe just a little bit of uh, ever so slight closer by. So we're going to do a little bit of watermarks closer to our to where we're viewing this from and a little bit of splashing I guess what I'm trying to do here is just give it a little bit of variety and then I'll do some raw sienna and put some rossy in it too near those that bluish color we use for some of the um, water ripples here and again a little bit of splashing of water and I think that's that's good all right I'm glad we had some fun doing our sailboat paintings in Rockland Maine I never worry about stuff If that happens, then I add a few more to the painting, and I call that perfect. All right, we'll see you on the next video.